Hello you multi uh, meticulous monsters of the multiverse. Ooh, there you go. Now you know. And thank you to Andreas Nijerman for that malt mention, introducing malt mates. Ralphie Review 940. And um, here's an interesting looking bottle. I'll, I'll bring it forward so as you could have a, a good look at it. There we go. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a blue whale. And then the information on the label. I think already many of you will realise, if you're experienced maltsters, that I have an independent bottling of a single malt here. And this is what I'm doing at the moment as part of the 2022 Summer into Autumn series of reviews in here in the Bothy. I'm, I'm interchanging official bottlings which are more accessible and easier to buy with independent bottlings which due to their low volume of production uh, are harder to find, less easy to access, but if you're an experienced whiskey drinker, it's bottles like this where increasing, increasingly you're going to find the excitement. It doesn't get discussed much uh, online and certainly not in books, but when you're into whiskey and other quality of spirits, and it could be rum and it could be bourbon, you'll find that over time you suffer from the diminishing returns uh, because the more you buy, the more you taste, the more you know about whatever you're into, uh, the more you start to see the shortcomings, the more you get a little bit more cynical um, about the the marketing that's a that's wrapped around these products and the more you you see behind the curtains as to the industrialized nature of the production of a product in this case spirits which to which you're emotionally attached and one very distinctive reason that you're emotionally attached is because alcohol triggers an emotional response because it's a narcotic it's as simple as that and people overlook that until they've got some experience and then you will buy a bottle of what you usually buy and you'll say mm, it's not quite the same I'm not enjoying it as much I can't put my finger on it I can't understand I used to enjoy this brand but I'm not enjoying it so much and then someone introduces you to a new brand or a better version of that brand and suddenly you're excited again you're satisfied and rewarded again. And this is easy to find happening in Scotch whisky. For a simple reason is the predominance and the very important input of the independent bottlers whose primary goal as small business, because many of them are very small businesses, is to buy casks through agents that from distilleries care for these casks, nurture these casks in their warehouses and then bottle them at a more sensitive time as compared to an official bottling which is simply, it's just working on a much larger scale and, and cannot and usually doesn't have such fine tuning. So here's a very good example of that. This is a bottle, it's a single malt actually, I've never reviewed before in all in over a decade of providing whiskey reviews on YouTube. I've never reviewed Chianani, so I'm going to do so now. There are a few more distilleries out there in Scotland because Scotland's got over 160 distilleries. It's probably heading towards 200 now actually, truth be told. Um, I know of them, I'm aware of them, but I've never actually bought bottles and reviewed them. Strathmill is one, Glenkeith is another, Speyburn is another, Speyside is another. I'll get round to them <laughs> eventually. But have a look at this. This is a natural coloured whisky. 
That is, that, there's no burnt sugar caramel colouring in that. It's not chill filtered either because when I add water to this it goes cloudy. The scotch mist descends. Um, it's bottled at 54.2%. More alcohol, more capacity for flavour. It's a simple equation. Works most of the time. And it's been bottled by the Thompson Brothers, who you may have never heard of, but you're now getting to know them now because they're bottling some really interesting, worthwhile stuff. And I'm keeping my eyes on the Thompson Brothers because they have their own little distillery. It's a North Highland, North East Highland distillery in a little town called Dornach, not that far away from Glenmorangie. Brora, Kleinlish, Balblea, and Chianenich. Chianenich is a North East Highland distillery and it has got a fascinating profile and you may have never heard of it and yet it's a big, big distillery. Let me introduce it to you. Uh, first of all, the practical stuff. Single malt Scotch whisky distilled at Chianenich Distillery 2009 vintage, aged 12 years. Number of bottles, 200. This is a single cask. You will find this with small independent bottlers. They are the kings and queens of the independent single cask. With the single cask, you get the singularity of the relationship over time between the cask and its contents and it would amaze you malt mates it would shock you just how diverse the flavors sensation range and the form of whiskey can be from one cask to another with exactly the same distillate in it from the same distillery it's extraordinary you You've no idea until you actually taste them side by side, which is a very rare situation. Very rare. Master classes and educational classes and um, ticket whiskey tastings, they tend to, to, to do flights or to, in terms of ages, or if they're doing uh, one single distillery, they focus on official bottlings. Um, you very rarely get a cross-section of independent bottlings from single casks of exactly the same age. Now, if you get the opportunity for a whiskey tasting relating to that, grab it with both hands. It's going to be a serious education. Now, about this whiskey. <laughs> what does it smell like? What does it taste like? We'll start by examining the distillery itself. I want to tell you a little about Chianenich. Um, if you pronounce it differently, pronounce it any way you want, it doesn't matter. You bought the bottle, you call it what you want. The, the way I pronounce it is Chianenich. But you see that I-C-H at the end? Hang about, where is it? Yep. Yeah. It, it ends with the I-C-H. Right. So you've got Glendronach. Bruchladi, Glenfiddich. So you've got this CH finish. Um, with Chianenich, it's ich, right? Like Glenfiddich, so Chianenich. That's as close as I'm going to get to. The rest is entirely at your own discretion. <laughs> um, this distillery is owned by Diageo. It's a big distillery and it provides a light, dry, grassy, floral, bulk volume, single malt content to many of Diageo's proprietary bland brands, including Johnny Walker. Uh, the nearest that Diageo have ever got to an official bottling is in the Fora and flora and fauna range and the single malt selection range a bottle of which i have open and is absolutely fabulous in the year 2000 and this is worth not worthy diageo changed the way they processed the malted barley 
for producing their whiskey. What they wanted was a clear wash. In other words, a clarified liquor, um, fermented liquor would go into the stills to remove the funky yeasty notes to give a much clearer, cleaner, sharper product. One other distillery, two, two other distilleries I can think of that can that do this are Clydeside Distillery in Glasgow and um, <laughs> the other one I forget, never mind. Let's start tasting this stuff. A word of warning. Quite a number of bottles of Tiananich from independent bottlers are non-events. Pick carefully. I have. I find Thompson Brothers only available in the UK, but these guys, they know what they're doing. They're well supported. They're genuinely keen about what they're involved in. And I expect great things from Dornoch Distillery when it finally arrives on the market. And when it does, it'll be arriving when it's ready. The, 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 the two brothers that have the distillery, Dornoch Distillery, they're pretty smart about it. They're playing a long hand game. It's the way to do it. Nose. Light, syrupy, vanilla, clean, fresh, completely unpeated. This, on the nose alone, immediately you can tell, is the absolute polar opposite to a Sherry Monster. This has been an ex-bourbon cask, probably a first fill, possibly rinsed before it became a first fill. Um, the balance on the nose between cask and spirit is excellent. This has been cool storage, you can just tell 12 years and to have that freshness, the maturity, but youthfulness at the same time. Slightly minty, mild banana, soft baked apple, slight, slight apricot note, gentle apricot, almost mixed in with a peachiness. I'm getting a big nose here, but bear in mind, this is bottled at high strength. This is a genuine cask strength whiskey. You'll pay extra for them in the UK. I'll tell you why. Because the taxes levied on high strength alcohol is extortionate. It's about the taxes. This is why cask strength whiskies, one significant reason why they are additionally expensive. It's down to taxation. Duty. Duty doesn't go to the government, it goes to the Crown. Understand that. It's fine. It's good to see things as they actually are, not as we imagine them or are told they are. Taste. Tiny, tiny sip. Big grapefruit crush lemon smokiness real sweet and sour with a soft sweet big sour blast of a of a malt very crisp if you ever remember Bailey Nickel Jarvie um, there are not that many. By the way, you know, see this? Yeah, you saw it. Two teaspoonfuls of water. Ten millilitres. Ten millilitres. Centilitres. Millilitres? It's not, not centilitres. <laughs> it's definitely centilitres, yeah. <clears throat> Some whiskies. Unless you add the water, you're never going to get the depth, the complexity. You're never going to get that bliss point. Where that bliss point is varies significantly between individuals. I add a lot of water to high strength whiskies, particularly when they're younger, particularly when they're first taste, tasting it raw, boom, explosive amount of flavour. To access that flavour, I dilute it slightly. To which you might say, hey Ralphie, well surely then if we buy it at 40%, all the dilutions done and all that flavour should be readily available. Uh, no. 
because when 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 whiskey is diluted from cask strength to 40%, some flavour is lost permanently due to the dilution and never comes back. That's why bottling plants where they dilute the whiskey and bottle the whiskey, that's why they smell such such a so amazing. And yet the people working there can't smell a thing because they're so used to it. Already a little touch scotch mist appearing. Just a little touch. On the nose, much calmer, creamier, softer, soft vanillas. There's a green creaminess, a barley sugar, uh, mild barley sugar toffee. The mint has subsided. There's a slight soft Confect, not quite confectionery, I wouldn't say that. Conserved gingeriness coming in. That apricot and peach are in with the ginger, that's why the ginger's suppressed. Little green apple note. The herbaceousness, the green notes, they're a little bit subdued, but they will start to rebound. Lovely coat lines round the glass considering the water I've had. I mean, this is moving fast. It will do so because it's a younger whiskey. Smelling it, smelling it again. Really, really good quality. It's so crisp and clean and it's produced to be. The actual production technique is designed to give a really light, fresh, zesty, um, summertime, perfect summer moment single malt. A word of advice, malt mates. This is probably sold out by now. Um, so what you're going to do, because bear in mind, there's only 200 bottles. And I got one of the last ones. But I'm, I'm reviewing this because it's a, a single malt I haven't reviewed before. It's a, an independent bottler I haven't mentioned before. And I'm, as part of me sharing to educate you, to make you aware and sharing my journey, I just want you to be aware of them because when you go into a shop, you will see a Chianonich on the shelf from an independent bottler somewhere, probably in the UK and in Europe. And you'll say to yourself, I've never heard of that one. Let's get dust on it. Is it worth having? At that point, you get your mobile device out and you do an online search for reviews and you may even come across this review. Um, and, and you put in the specifics and you look at the past history of the independent bottler. Do they generally bottle good stuff or do they have a few bloopers, blooper bottlings? And it won't take you more than 10 minutes and it's absolutely worth the investment. And furthermore, don't forget to ask a member of staff in, in the shop. You can't do that in Amazon. You can't do that in the supermarket, but hey, you won't find these bottles there. They're just not there. These bottles are in the specialist, smaller specialist shop who are prepared to have small contracts with small producers. And this is where the real excitement is to be found. And if you're aware of it, you'll see it when you spot it. Won't you? Final taste before my malt mark. An oak infused creaminess is growing. There's a zestiness and bitterness coming from the wood itself. And it's bonding with the bitterness and zestiness in the single malt. And because they've both got this contributory factor in common, it's being amplified and giving you a sweet and sour, effervescent, delightful grape like Italian grape you know that you go to Italy on holiday and someone just plonks down some big juicy grapes on a plate that you've never heard of variety you've never heard of before and you have a grape and you go my goodness that's the best grape I've ever eaten in my life hey mom mates I've been there <laughs> it happened to me in Naples of all places um, and I'll never forget that pizza by the way really thin crust and slightly scorched and bubbled on top and 
sparsed, thick tomato, sparse cheese, loads of olive oil infused herbs, rosemary, particularly rosemary, parsley, thyme, um, and then lashings of fresh ground black pepper. A plain margarita, oh my goodness, some things you never forget. But there again, if you, to, to, to not forget these things, you need the palate. We need to spend the time to take the time to educate our palate, and it's why you're here watching this. This is why we have a better quality of life. Because we understand instinctively, the more we engage with quality, we know what quality is. And this transfers, we start with whiskey, but it transfers to food, it transfers to friendship, it transfers to art and music. To stimulate one sense is to stimulate all senses. Bit of wisdom there. Just dishing it out from the bothy here. From the barrel, malt mates. It's what you do. <laughs> Final taste. Light. Classic, intense, light single malt. Sweet and sour, bitter creeping in from the wood, beautiful sensation rich, light flavours, the mildest of sultana, vanilla, soft, 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 distant toffee, green elements, slight Irishness to it, some mintiness, some, some almost chlorophyll you might call it, although you don't taste chlorophyll. But anything that's kind of mild, like a green leaf, like a lettuce leaf or a dandelion leaf, it's got that about it. What am I going to give this? It's a really, really good whiskey. I bought this on the recommendation of a shop professional. I said, hey, Rat, could you tell me something exciting? He showed me this bottle, said, that's exciting. I said, I trust you, I'm gonna buy this bottle. And then I'm gonna hopefully have an exciting experience. Have I? Yes, 90 out of 100. It's a malt mark, it's an integrity malt mark. This is a top end whiskey from a distillery which is completely off the radar. Completely off the radar. Chianonik, who's heard of it? This is where the expl explorations become a little bit more interesting, Mott Mates. Enjoy your explorations. If you want to pop back again for my next review, Ralphie Review 940 Extras, I shall be talking a little bit about the less well-known whiskies and how I go about finding them. And there you have it. Join me. I'm Ralphie from the Bothy. Till, you, till I see you again, take care of yourself.